discuss those things as we go along in the presentation. Um, and here we go. Thank you very much, Mark. Yes, uh, it's good. It's good. good morning, everybody. Uh, today for our third and final webinar in the series, Implementing Professional Development Practices to Ensure Effective Project Coordination, Administration, and Management. Again, just briefly, my name is Mark Espino. Uh, currently, I am the SITVER Program Director of the Sequanan or Tribal Vocational Rehabilitation Program. Uh, I am a psychotherapist in private uh, and private practice, and also one of uh, five trainers uh, here with Avertech, uh, five, uh, one of the training consultants. Uh, it's great to be here again on the beautiful campus, uh, Friday, July 15th, 2016. Wanted to uh, take a moment uh, and uh, have John, if you wouldn't mind, uh, just advancing the slide uh, to see where we are at. Great, yes, thank you. Um, so uh, before we jump into some of the content areas today, uh, we did want to take a moment and just review some information that was presented over the uh, two previous webinars, um, the, the first day and then also the uh, community of practice uh, yesterday, that was Thursday, and highlight some of the comments uh, that were made uh, and really just kind of provide a brief summary uh, to give you some of the context uh, that we were at and some of the highlights and recommendations that were made uh, for uh, AverTAC uh, based on some of the uh, questions you have uh, proposed. Wanted to take a look at some interesting information uh, that was presented that was based on uh, addressing uh, consumer barriers uh, over felons and legal issues. So we want to make sure that as uh, we begin to develop our training topics, uh, your feedback is very valuable. And that was one of the content areas that was recommended uh, the training be developed around. Uh, in addition, uh, Carol had uh, also uh, made a request or a suggestion uh, that uh, she would love to see a model a professional development plan for ABRS program staff uh, to be developed that could maybe universally be uh, agreed upon, uh, that we could all use or uh, have a template that can be adapted uh, based on the program's needs. Um, so uh, yes, we will take a look at that. Uh, we had also received uh, a professional development plan uh, from Gail. Uh, I do believe, John, do we have that up in the uh, downloadable PDF uh, documents in the pods? Sure thing. It's the last one in the list. and You can just click on it and you can download the file right to your desktop. Sure, yes. And just as a reminder, maybe if this is your first time uh, attending or listening, uh, those PDF documents uh, are there for you to use and to save. Uh, I would actually recommend uh, to each of the participants right now uh, that you start doing that process um, so you can have the tools available and accessible to you uh, at any time uh, to save to your uh, computers, your desktops, and your laptops. Uh, because some of the information we'll be going over today uh, is going to be directly connected to those. Um, so you do have a working temp uh, template of um, Gail's programs, professional development plan that, that she uses. So I uh, very much appreciate uh, your participation and uh, your sharing of knowledge with the group, which is uh, what the community of practice is all about. Some of the information that was also presented uh, was just in specific to uh, training overall. Uh, Suzanne had, had uh, mentioned um, resources within travel human resources. Uh, they often provide trainings, so a great avenue to look at. Uh, Gail had discussed small business administration, uh, social security, uh, uh, state transition plans uh, that are out there, as well as the Disability Law Center, uh, as well as uh, state, uh, uh, the ADA coordinators. Let's get in touch with them. Uh, Dodi had also mentioned uh, in the COP, uh, looking into uh, developmental uh, disabilities and uh, resources in that area. As well as uh, we watch for training from other human uh, service agencies, uh, such as veteran community mental health and disability specific organizations. So all these are different areas that we can take a look at. 
certainly tribal professional development plans and how that blends within tribal organizations uh, and working with human resources, uh, using their annual reviews and performance plans, uh, and expanding on that, uh, again, as uh, incorporating uh, more into your professional development plan. We also had comments from Michelle and, um, and Daryl, a really a rich interaction of how do we acknowledge and recognize and incentivize uh, the accomplishments that are made in achieving those professional development goals uh, through the achievement of those objectives. So I really want to acknowledge that. And certainly other comments that were made, um, Carol and, and, and Suzanne really uh, talking about the mission and, and the vision and, and really getting specific into training content areas. Uh, such as substance abuse or TBI, uh, traumatic brain injury, that can really enhance the staff's knowledge of that particular topic. Uh, so as uh, we begin today, uh, I also wanted to kind of go back to our discussion, really emphasize and highlight this idea of the IPE, the individualized, uh, indiv individualized plan for employment, that really parallels the professional development plan. Uh, that was that was a theme that seemed to come out that everybody really connected well with. And that roadmap that we use in working with our consumers is the roadmap that we would develop for ourselves in really um, obtaining our goals. And again, just as an overall reminder. By developing, implementing, and obtaining uh, these goals and objectives in the plan, uh, we are really uh, going to do a great service to our consumers, the individuals, the uh, American Indian and Alaska Natives with disabilities that we serve, uh, and therefore improving our outcomes and employment and improving our overall program performance. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute and review that as well. As we're moving through, I encourage your participation uh, in your comments. So as we're beginning, if you have questions or you would like more information, that uh, will be available either through the uh, previous documents that you can see, uh, or if you have questions about any of the content areas, uh, please uh, stop and ask. Uh, we can see as you're typing your responses, we'll take the time to, to honor those questions. All right, John, I think we're uh, ready to get going with our uh, slides. Professional development plan. Uh, really, this document is merely a template uh, to help you in your personal and career growth, to help you move from good to great. Uh, feel free to use all or part of the elements uh, provided here. Uh, research shows that the more planning and details you build into a, de a professional development plan, the more likely you will actually stick to the plan and change for the better. So this is the first step in the professional development plan, and that's to create a cover page. Uh, it should include the individual's name who will be evaluated, the date of the evaluation, and the director and supervisor's name. Uh, consequently, errors are reduced because names and dates are in writing. And you can see staff's name, date, and uh, supervisor or director name. Next slide. Every employee is expected to improve their performance and capability in their current job, as well as their professional development skills for increased responsibilities and the provision of service for AVERS consumers. And really, what will it take to get our AVERS program staff there? Um, we need to assess program staff's readiness uh, and the readiness and commitment to continuous learning and development to bring about critical changes in relation to the program staff needs. The planning process is directed by the staff member in partnership with the supervisor to improve staff professional growth and increase level of competency in your current position or to help the staff advance in their career. Development is about learning new skills and knowledge 
and the ability to apply it effectively in the workplace. So we see here, what's in it for you? Better able to successfully achieve your goals. Gratification from striving to be your best. Opportunity to expand skills for future career growth. I want to take a minute and uh, take a half step back towards gratification from striving to be your best. Oftentimes, uh, that simple concept can be overlooked. When we perform our best, we naturally have positive uh, feelings, emotions, uh, value in the work that we're doing. And sometimes that's hard to measure. And really that gratification is, is something that, that drives us. Uh, and really it's, it's kind of that pat on the back to ourselves as we continue to um, grow how we do. Avertech uh, recognizes that professional development of Aver staff includes and respects uh, the adult learner who come to training with their respective knowledge and skills. I want to take a moment and kind of share uh, some alternate uh, ideas uh, and really uh, the platform and e-curriculum and webinars that Avertech has established uh, allows for self-paced learning to occur. I'm busy. You are extremely busy. Training doesn't always occur on our schedule. I'd be interested to see how many missed uh, the webinars this week, webinars one and two, and are participating today. Uh, for those of you who may have missed one, did you review the previous webinars uh, to learn about the content, uh, to increase your knowledge of the topic? These types of behaviors identify an internal drive for success. Many people are naturally motivated and learn when they have interest. Others can be mentored or coached towards success. And at times, we encounter those who believe they know it all, when in fact, they don't know that they really don't know. The ability to be a student, a learner, a listener, is an integral factor in learning and professional growth. It's a monumental challenge to teach a mentor or mentor someone who already knows everything. Avertech understands uh, that Aver staff are a diverse and talented group of individuals. Consequently, the training in TA complements the adult learner. Teachings must be relevant and directly applicable to their lives and jobs. Be involved in managing their own learning. Be able to apply life experience and knowledge to new learning. I wanted to pose a question and maybe get some responses from the audience. What are the characteristics of Native American or Alaska Native adult learners? How do we learn best? We'll take a moment here and maybe see if we can't uh, elicit a response or two. I just want to say Rachel commented on your first question and she she said I missed uh, one but haven't watched the first one yet and she plans to today. Excellent. And in answer to your question for learners, Rachel says visually and hands-on learning. Yes, excellent. Uh, and to the first comment we certainly uh, have that available to you from that self-paced model of learning uh, because, like we said, our schedules may not allow us to at all times, uh, but that in content is there for you to review. So excellent. As well as, yes, visually and hands-on, um, we can often learn by doing through an experiential model of learning uh, along those lines. So excellent. Uh, Vaughn states uh, she, that, that she agrees, or he agrees, with hands-on learning. Uh, Carol says in person rather than web based that human interaction interaction is important. Uh, Rachel says thank you. Uh, Christ McClellan, I would also say hands on and visually. Yeah, so there seems to be a consensus uh, having a live interaction, uh, interactions where people are present uh, with each other. Uh, and I would also incorporate a group learning model. Uh, is, is a tendency uh, for 
uh, traditional groups and uh, Native American culture to come together uh, in that sense. So a lot of times that learning happens in groups. We'll, uh, we'll again pause for just a half second. So uh, we'll make sure before moving forward that we acknowledge everybody's comments or questions. Carol shares, yes, group learning and sharing. Also, confirmation and discussion. Confirmation and discussion. I'd be curious, Carol, if you can expand on that just a little more. Maybe we can come back to that uh, if you. Rachel says, and eating together. Oh, yes. Visiting doesn't always have to be classroom style. Yes, a natural learning environment uh, often occurs outside of the four walls. Uh, a lot of times we will circle up uh, outside uh, through talking circles or um, connecting uh, more in a natural setting uh, versus the classroom setting. Excellent responses. Uh, I think these are the types of information that become valuable to Avertac as they begin to develop uh, their talking circles or their training components uh, and uh, what we need to look at and value. Uh, Carol places in response to your question to her, common understanding, uh, reflection of learning. And then Eugenia says family involvement. Yes, yes, oftentimes uh, learning does, doesn't occur in isolation. Uh, we learn from family, we learn from elders, uh, we learn from uh, other family members and uh, they become active participants in our learning process and they in turn learn themselves. Excellent. I really appreciate everybody's comments. Uh, you, can, you can sense uh, the knowledge that's out there. Great. And um, a few more comments in before we move forward. Sarah says, hi, boss. Good to see you. Carol says, not Western style classroom model, chairs in a row, etc." Yes. Uh, again, good recommendations for uh, even the environment setup. Um, how we can connect with each other uh, in a circle is uh, certainly very important. We'll uh, take a few more comments and uh, begin to kind of move through the webinar to make sure we uh, hit some of those content areas uh, to really give you guys uh, an ability to see where we're at. Um, and so as we're doing that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll make, maybe step back as the questions come, or if not, uh, take note um, and come back to them later. And so again, when we're taking a look, uh, just to kind of review after we've had a, a comment session, what's in it for you? better able to successfully achieve your goals, gratification for striving to be your best, opportunity to expand skills for future career growth. We can go to the next slide. Determining where to focus your development efforts. Where will development provide you with the greatest impact for success? Review the competencies of the AVER staff and again, consider the technical and functional knowledge and skills required for success. Review the development planning process diagram. Uh, we will begin to start to break down uh, the professional development model uh, with some of these concepts. So as we move forward, uh, the competencies, uh, the technical and functional knowledge, uh, and reviewing the development planning process uh, is what's in uh, upcoming slide. Steps in the development planning process. Determine where your strengths and development needs exist. Consider the technical and functional knowledge and skills required for success. There's technical and functional knowledge and competencies and behaviors. Let me break that down a little bit for you so we may have a little bit better understanding of uh, some of the terminologies that we've used. 
And these are going to be a comprehensive approach towards professional development. So we need to take a look at each factor and then combine them before we move forward. Technical strengths is knowledge and skills and ability. So knowledge of the theory and practice of vocational rehabilitation counseling, client rehabilitation services, and culturally appropriate approaches. Knowledge of vocational assessment, career exploration, job seeking skills, on the job evaluation and training, job development, and placement skills of clients with disabilities. Also the skills and abilities. Excellent oral and written communication skills. Must work effectively with other people at a variety of ages and levels. Uh, participate effectively as a VRT member. Must know various computer programs and be able to work independently to get a project completed. Those are the technical and functional knowledge and skill sets uh, that need to be uh, determined uh, and evaluated and assessed as you develop your professional development plan. Functional knowledge and skills. Principles and objectives of vocational rehabilitation counseling. Skills, traits, and abilities needed in a wide variety of occupations to assist and inform consumers. And we need to be aware of our social services programs, the various departments, and the regulations, the tribal regulations, the federal regulations. We need to have knowledge of social and psychological problems of American Indians and Alaska Natives with disabilities. So those are multiple components uh, that we need to take into account. And Simultaneously, as you can see in the slide, we have our, our technical and we also have our competencies and behaviors. Competencies, let's take a look at that. That's the knowledge, the ability, and the skills. Behaviors, our actions, our attitudes, our belief. Once we have the opportunity to take this uh, this concept in its entirety, then we can move to that next level. Select one to three areas where focused development would have the most impact on achieving your current and or future goals, which I am going to review in the upcoming slides. I did want to make a, a, a note here that if you do notice, the last stage in this diagram is a repeat of the first stage. And that is to determine where your strengths and development needs exist. So we're constantly coming back to that question. What's next? Um, time after time and year after year. Um, so this next slide that I wanted to show you is really going to give you an idea of some of the components that a development action plan or a professional development plan include. This is just one example of a template uh, for you to take a look at. Again, I would remind you, take a look at your PDF downloadable documents uh, and download that uh, into your uh, computer. Uh, that way we can look at that. So I'll give them, uh, audience a moment just to kind of browse over it uh, and see some of the various components uh, before we move forward in the upcoming slides. We'll actually break this down uh, piece by piece step by step. Great. Hopefully you've had a chance to just review that. Uh, and as we move forward into uh, our next slide, we take that template and we begin to take a look at where are we going to be determining where to focus your development efforts? Identify the development activities that will have the greatest impact on your ability to achieve the objectives of the professional plan successfully. In addition to your annual goals and objectives, consider which competencies would be most impactful if developed. Select from one to three areas that will be most beneficial for your development such as the leverage, uh, leveraging of a strength or neutralizing a weakness. And list them in the table below. Indicate with a check mark whether this is a strength, uh, proficiency, or weakness. 
So as you can see in the next slide, determining where to focus your development, I will see the greatest impact on my success by focusing development in the following areas. So you can see they broke it down into the competency or behavior, the strength to leverage, or a proficiency to strengthen, or a weakness to neutralize. If we take the examples that are in the boxes, competency and behavior, VR counselors disability awareness, substance uh, use disorder, maybe that could be strengthened. Proficiency to strengthen, maybe that could be awareness and knowledge of diabetes. And a weakness to neutralize, autism spectrum disorder. So we really begin to get specific on the content areas that we want to address. For example, uh, over the course of this past new grant cycle, We've implemented transition services, which is an emerging trend within uh, tribal vocational rehabilitation naturally. And so we're now seeing consumers with autism spectrum disorder. It really is incumbent upon the professionals or the programs who target these uh, transition students uh, to learn more about this uh, diagnosis uh, or this disability uh, as we begin to work with those individuals. go to the next slide. De development action plan, goal one of three. So the same format will be utilized in the development of the goals. So here you can see we've really uh, identified uh, the development goal one. What do you want to change? What will result from the change? What would success look like? So again in the template as an example uh, we've provided you and filled in uh, the gaps. And for here it states, I will improve my knowledge of disability so that I can move more effective, so that I can be more effective when serving consumers with a broad range of disabilities. I will know that I have been successful when I understand how a person's disability informs the development of their IPE. So you can see here the development of the goals and how that will impact their learning and growth. John, I just wanted to take a second and see. Uh, we did have a couple uh, questions or comments that came up. Uh, maybe you could just review. Sure thing. Um, to round out the conversation earlier, Carol said uh, humor and laughter. Uh, adding to the styles, I guess. And uh, Stephen commented saying that I am a visual learner. However, webinars uh, do come close. So uh, challenge accepted, Stephen. We're going to make these webinars better. Uh, and then also Carol says stories telling about the topic. Um, and then finally the comments. Rachel asked if the attachments will be downloadable from the AverTAC website. Uh, and we'll, and I respond to saying that we'll work on what we can post to our site, but if anyone wants any of these documents, they can uh, write an email to avertac at nu.edu, and we'll send them to them. We'll, we are ready to share any document. Great, great. So there again, we've identified uh, back to the uh, development plan, the goal one uh, that we're going to be working towards. So let's move forward and take a look at that next component of the plan, uh, which includes a lot of information. And really, we begin as part of that action plan to identify the tasks and activities involved. What specific tasks and activities uh, will you do to help reach your goals? Secondly, we want to identify target dates. When will you start or stop? and stop and complete each action. Support. Uh, what are the needed barriers to overcome? What will help you need and from whom? 
What help will you need and from whom? What barriers will you likely face? So really we're forecasting uh, what can be some of the barriers and challenges along the way and how are we going to overcome that? Could certainly be, well, we'll, give, we'll get into some of the examples here. Example we have, number one, under tasks and activities, during the AVER staff retreat, I will provide training on substance disorder. Uh, the target dates, I will complete training on August 25, 2016. This will be in time to record successes in the annual report due September 2016. The support, the director, the supervisor will provide direction, will review PowerPoint uh, and edit and approve document and bibliography. So that would be an example of uh, a goal uh, and how we would go about doing that. Example two, task and activity would be identify training opportunities for type 2 dis uh, diabetes. As we know, this is an emerging uh, disability uh, within tribal communities. We want to identify that target date, complete within one year of goal setting date, July 12, 2016. And the supports will include director, supervisor, and staff to provide financial and staff development time to attend training. As we discussed yesterday's in COPs, the Avers community is very fortunate to have the capacity to identify and utilize trainings and grant funding to support those dollars. And that can be done uh, locally, it can be done regionally, or nationally uh, through participation in various conferences and training. Um, components. Example three, tasks and activities. Identify training opportunities for autism spectrum disorder. Target dates. Complete within one year of goal setting date, July 12, 2016. And what supports are needed? Director, the supervisor, and staff to provide financial and staff development time to attend training. Again, as uh, the importance of the time factor, uh, we could even be specific in identifying when those trainings are, so that way we're ensuring that uh, we're intermittently obtaining training throughout the year because our consumers are our number one uh, customer, so we want to always make sure that uh, our training impacts their consumer services uh, minimally, uh, so that's where we uh, phase it in throughout the year. And really as an alternate idea, uh, that, that's where strategic grant planning comes into place uh, from a program management and coordination standpoint. Great, let's uh, take a look at the next slide. Development Action Plan Goal 1 of 3. Review your progress with your leader, mentor, every 90 days. Uh, certainly a recommendation and a suggestion. Here you can see that we, maybe we'll be looking at quarterly updates. We want to take a look at how we're uh, progressing towards that goal. Uh, where, uh, what achievements have been made or not made. And the staff can initial and date uh, and uh, or uh, the leader can uh, initial and date as well. Uh, so that way everybody's aware of the progress that's being made. And so you can see here, uh, within the template, they provided you multiple times throughout the year uh, where that can be reviewed. Uh, and it's very important to review those uh, documents because we put so much time and effort and energy into it, um, and really not to address that and to let it go um, would be, well, be tragic. Um, it's really an important tool for all of us. Uh, I did want to take a moment, and John, if we could, let's go back to the uh, entire uh, action plan in our earlier slides for me and you, I believe it's slide 35. Yes, perfect, thank you. Wanted to take in a man minute again and kind of get some feedback from uh, the community. 
Uh, this, as we said, is one example of a development action plan. Is this template um, feasible? Is this, is this something that can be used? Uh, is it too much? Is it too little? Uh, what are your thoughts about this particular plan uh, and the breakdown of some of those components now that we've had a chance to look at it? I'd uh, like to get some of your guys' thoughts on uh, how this looks uh, as we're moving forward. What are the good parts about it? Uh, what are maybe some areas uh, that you can see could be developed a little more or a little less? Um, and kind of being specific on those uh, content areas. Uh, because this is a pretty detailed uh, development plan. Um, as, uh, as some of you are typing, uh, I do want to add a personal reflection kind of along the lines of uh, what Gail's professional development plan looked like. And uh, within that, um, there is um, beauty and simplicity. And, and really from an open-ended uh, question uh, within like an interview process, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What could you improve on? And really uh, keeping it open to dialogue, uh, like uh, within those types of um, tools, uh, that's one thing I noticed from uh, Gail's template, um, that it, it allowed for a lot of discussion and flexibility uh, to happen. Um, so as you begin to obtain these documents, um, you can certainly pick out each one from, uh, certainly pick out information from each one of the areas uh, to develop your own. Uh, and this is, where, this is where we'd also uh, look today to say, um, hey, what, what could we help within our, again, as it was recommended, our universal program development plan? Um, so that's kind of where the question leads, is really what, uh, um, what components are essential and, and how can we best use them. We can, uh, I can share everyone's comments on your question. Uh, starting with Rachel, she says, I like it. Bond states, easy and simple. Uh, Dino, it's simple and comprehensible. I would use this. Uh, Eugenia says, it is a pretty good tool. You could also tailor it to the needs of your program and the client needs. Uh, Rachel says, I like how it is specific. Smart goals, specific, achievable, etc. Paula comments, uh, DAP or DAP looks good, as I am a visual person. Stephen says, oh, uh, this is a side conversation, so I'll move to Carol. It makes goals clear and accountable. Um, Paula states, right now, timing is perfect to implement documents that will assist us in any areas of growth. Uh, Carol also adds, also like regular check-ins on progress, uh, uh, don't wait until the end of the year. And Rachel says, I agree, Carol. Carol adds, it is a fillable format, which would be great. Uh, Norberto states, when implementing, it will be important to keep target dates and review dates scheduled and kept to. Uh, Paula, too, states, uh, lots of training going on right now here in Salt River, I think. So this just adds to what we can improve on in our program. And Stephen states, it looks simple and straightforward, focused and time sensitive. This would easily work for me. Uh, great. We're definitely taking notes. Uh, the fillable format uh, sounds like something that everybody could uh, use a, a template ready, ready to go um, versus recreating. So that's an excellent recommendation uh, on the technical side uh, that we may, able, may be able to uh, adapt uh, along the way. And, and really, the, the themes that we're seeing, uh, specific um, goals and accountability, uh, time with target dates and review dates, certainly the uh, simplicity, uh, the comparison to the SMART goals, specific, achievable, uh, those types of 
So when we look at this plan, we begin to identify all of these small components within each goal. And uh, you notice that, um, at least from this point, um, we've really identified one goal for the individual within those content areas uh, for the knowledge, uh, the technical, the functional, and then as well as the skills and abilities. And it does sound like there are great opportunities to partner with various programs in your region uh, to um, collaborate amongst trainings. Uh, I do know within, as, as uh, Paula's comment, uh, regarding various trainings going on, uh, it'd be good to outreach to other programs, to other directors, and even ask them, what trainings do you have upcoming that could possibly benefit? Because resources have been dedicated, and certainly if it uh, is within the program's ability to partner on, on uh, training opportunities. On that note, uh, Rachel says, I think I'd like to see Chickasaw, Chickasaw Nation's documents that Michelle mentioned yesterday to compare and see if they have anything that would be much different. Yeah, that's great. Excellent comments. Well, maybe we can uh, have that out there and certainly put a request to Michelle to uh, see uh, what other sharing can be out there within our uh, community of learning. Great. It looks like uh, most of the comments have, have been made. Uh, John, if we want to fast forward to uh, maybe slide 41. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, here uh, potential other goals that we might want to take into consideration. And that's going to include uh, short-term goals. Maybe goals from, you know, up to a year. What are my upcoming year goals? Uh, what are my mid-range goals? Uh, up to three years. Uh, and what are my long-term goals? Five years and beyond. Really, we want to take time to vision where we're going and how are we going to get there. For example, taking a, a short-term goal, uh, possibly for a new VR counselor coming on board. Uh, maybe that goal would be to enroll in a university, uh, to acquire an education in uh, VR 101, uh, working towards acquiring a Bachelor of Arts degree. Could be a mid-range goal. Uh, we could also acquire a BA, uh, Bachelor of Arts in VR counseling. That could be within the university setting, a uh, four-year goal, a three-year goal or more. And certainly long-term goals. Uh, where would I want to be within five years? Acquire a Master's of Science in VR counseling. Uh, so we can really begin to set the stage and start to look at uh, how we want to go about achieving those goals. Um, and here specifically to, to the academic coursework. Uh, and really for uh, vocational rehabilitation, that certified rehabilitation counselor uh, that's out there, the certification and the requirements to obtain that certification, this could be that pathway uh, towards that professional development goal um, to obtain that. And, and those are um, recommendations for goals uh, in years. We could certainly move well beyond that. But we wanted to give you some idea of how it builds upon itself uh, as the process continues to unfold. And certainly if there are other recommendations out there or institutions or trainings that people are aware of, uh, please share with us uh, a link or um, another resource where individuals can access. Uh, I may uh, take a moment, uh, I believe just as of yesterday, uh, for uh, program directors, uh, we received an email from Northwest Indian College. Uh, that says they have put out their schedule uh, of um, accredited courses uh, specific to tribal vocational rehabilitation. So that's their TVR Institute. Um, I would really support uh, each of you taking a look at that and really taking a look at their coursework uh, that could benefit us uh, as professionals in the field uh, in those content areas. Uh, so that's a great, great resource uh, to begin to look into. 
And even though we begin to like identify these goals and this pathway, um, doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to take these action steps immediately. A lot of time, there's the internal processes that take place. Uh, your discussions with your family, your discussions with your uh, elders, uh, or a spiritual consultation, or taking it in, into, into personal prayer and self-reflection and introspection to see if this is a viable pathway for you, um, and identifying those challenges and barriers along the way. Uh, so there's great opportunities ahead, and, and really, we're quite fortunate to have uh, the ability to obtain training and education through possibly program-funded training, through program-funded uh, or grant-funded uh, credentials uh, and credits. Um, so for individuals, I do want to also acknowledge if it's uh, an academic pathway and you've been out of academia for a while, uh, you may want to begin your own transition plan uh, and training or education. So maybe even prior to that, that may be taking Microsoft training courses to update yourself on the latest versions or programs uh, that are out there. Again, I want to reflect back that comparison of the professional development plan to the IPE. And these are some of those components that we help our consumers with as they maybe transition into uh, the academic world. Uh, certainly is a great learning curve uh, that's out there that we need to uh, take into account as we move down this way uh, to set a path for success. Um, so that's a, a great idea. I want to just take a moment and see if there are any other responses out there. Okay, uh, and we can move forward. So here you can see we're coming back uh, to the same uh, slide that we have, steps in development processing. So we just want to summarize again. Uh, determine where your strengths and development needs exist. From that uh, entirety, we want to take a look at the technical and functional knowledge and skills, as well as the competencies and behaviors of the staff. Then we want to select one to three areas where focused development would have the most impact on achieving your current and future goals. And again, this process continues to repeat itself uh, over and over on a continual basis, uh, quarterly, um, biannually, annually, where again we're going to determine where your strengths and developments needs exist. I notice we have a couple of comments or questions coming in. We have Rachel adding, our program currently supports training costs for conferences, short-term trainings, and webinars. But since I've been on board, we haven't had anyone see college courses. Do any of the programs on this webinar provide college course courses for their staff? I know it is an allowable cost based on those that have attended Dr. Kundu's program and such, but I am curious how other programs have pitched it to their tribe. Excellent question, Rachel. I appreciate that because um, I know as us as a, a small community within the Avers culture, uh, word of mouth is oftentimes uh, a great approach to be able to, to uh, solicit or obtain information. Um, so yes, if others are aware of colleges or universities or um, how they've gone about getting approval uh, to do that um, is great. And it's obvious to see that as a uh, developmental foundation, really working in the academic field um, to obtain that, that transition or entryway into VR from um, uh, an AA degree uh, or a certification that can lead to uh, a bachelor's degree and then subsequently a master's degree uh, that could potentially be out there. 
uh, and we'll we'll answer a few more, and then I I can also share some personal uh, reflections of my professional development plan coming along the way. Stephen adds, my manager is on board with any computer training that he may need. Excellent. Um, and then Carol says, we could pay for tuition for staff, but I have not had any requests to do so. Interesting. And then Gail say, says, the organization does support college course. Time management becomes a concern with village travel, with little or no internet, and class slash homework time is difficult within the week with a full caseload. I can personally attest in talking to some uh, directors out there in the community. Um, it is quite an undertaking uh, to begin to climb that ladder uh, and continue to climb the ladder and continue to climb the ladder. Uh, you look down and you're, you're pretty high off the ground uh, and you've come a long way and sometimes you can't give up, uh, but the uh, potential stress and balancing all of life's uh, pieces uh, comes into account, especially when we begin to take on uh, these these new adventures. And really, from what we're hearing from the community, the ability to move in this direction is there. Uh, we do need to take into consideration uh, the impact it will have on the programs. Because nowadays, I believe in the direction that um, education is going, there is a distance learning model uh, that's being developed where online coursework uh, is a component with maybe a live uh, week-long campus session, uh, maybe on a, um, every th six months, every nine months. Uh, that way, uh, the components happen. And then, of course, the challenges along the way where uh, internet accessibility to be able to have the technology available and accessible uh, to achieve some of those goals is certainly out there. It's great to hear that there is that support again uh, coming along the way. Now we have a couple questions being typed. Rachel says thanks. Um, Carol adds, one of our current counselors started with OYATE many years ago. Uh, they earned a BS and an MA through RSA funded program at SDSU. So tuition was included. We allowed work time to participate and supported her travel. Awesome opportunity. Wow, what, what a great success story. Um, of professional development and obtainment of degrees specific to vocational rehabilitation that was funded through the federal government, the Rehabilitation Services Administration. Um, so you can see and hear live examples uh, that it, it is an actuality uh, for individuals to make their way through the process. And uh, I would be curious, just as a follow up, um, how that individual uses that knowledge and skill sets now, uh, maybe in a, in a VR capacity or within the tribal organization itself uh, to obtain um, um, employment advancements, uh, to have uh, and achieve those uh, positions of leadership, uh, to have those knowledge and skills to, uh, to be able to succeed in that environment. So excellent. I uh, congratulate the individual and uh, thank you, Carol, for uh, um, sharing that example uh, with us. Carol says she is a VR counselor with Visions. Mia does share her story. Excellent. So, so a testament to when we invest uh, in individuals who succeed, uh, who have a desire to continue to not only uh, provide services, but to also uh, create new leaders, uh, as we've mentioned in previous webinars, that will support uh, tribal organizations um, and will mentor others um, along the way. It's not an easy pathway. Excellent. Gail adds, the organization offers one year off to obtain a degree and return to the job. Yeah, excellent. 
uh, if it's a tribal organizational policy uh, within, within the department's policies, uh, that's a great educational opportunity uh, to have your job come back and obtain uh, necessary training to transition into and so they develop the skill set uh, to go from there. Rachel shares by saying, yes, I benefited from Pet Air and the program I was employed with at the time allowed the travel time three separate weeks at SDSU. Tuition, travel expenses, and per diem were all covered by Pet Air. But had I been required to take leave to attend, I would not have been able to. So establishing that process within the organization uh, who is willing to support you um, is definitely uh, needed uh, because if it weren't, then that may not have happened. Carol remarks, the opportunity was offered to many. Mia said yes, it was not an easy journey. But she did it and can now be a VR counselor anywhere and then to add on, or many other careers. Uh, and Rachel says, that's awesome, Gail. And Sarah Hernandez says, ooh, I so wish we had that kind of support here at SITBR. Sure, we'll definitely discuss some of those options uh, moving forward. Uh, again, I, I do believe those opportunities exist. Um, and that's why we're here today to support uh, Northwest Indian College through their efforts in their Tribal Vocational Rehabilitation Institute and in leading that pathway uh, and allowing us to uh, engage in learning, uh, credited or non-credited, uh, through uh, auditing coursework uh, simply for the knowledge of that. So um, it's here and it's available and certainly supported by many programs uh, is certainly capable uh, for that to happen. Stephen adds, I have a BA in psychology and 20 years experience counseling. However, computers are not my strong point. We have a local college, Western Nevada College, UNR extension, that have some computer classes. I refer some clients to this college for their GED and computer classes. Excellent. A great experience, background, uh, but also the self-awareness and self-assessment of skill building uh, that can take place uh, along the way, uh, but also good recommendations for uh, consumers and also cl uh, clients that you work with. I know we'll be coming up shortly on our, our time limit here, so I just wanted to acknowledge that as we kind of wrap up with our final comments and questions uh, for the day. Uh, and Rachel follows up, I know the program I am currently with would support those opportunities. I just need to work on if we can offer to pay for tuition. I hadn't thought of it until now, but I will pursue it and will include it in the discussion of professional development plans for staff. That's great. And certainly, uh, we're beginning to possibly send some recommendations uh, and to research some information along these lines for uh, programs, uh, they are, the Avers programs that are out there. I want to thank everybody for your participation today and throughout the week. Again, in summary, um, it has been my honor uh, to be with you today and to be part of your community. And I know we will we'll continue uh, to strive towards excellence in the work that we do. Uh, and I pray for each one of you along your own journeys uh, as you continue to uh, do the good work that you do. Um, I uh, will keep it open for uh, just a few more minutes for last comments. Um, and similarly as yesterday, I would like to request that if individuals are utilizing, uh, how many participants are attending the training webinar with you? Uh, part of all the performance measures we look at is the number of attendees. So for those of you who have multiple people maybe uh, viewing the webinar on one computer, uh, just type in how many people are attending or participating in the webinar at your organization today. Uh, so certainly if you have a group of three and you've only signed in once, um, Type in three and let us know. Um, I just want to say you all have a blessed day as we go forward. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll go webinar silent in a moment. But at the same time, the shell will stay open. So if you have questions that you want to put in the chat area, we'll be able to uh, 
uh, copy those and send them to our coordinators here and we can address those questions. Also, you can send questions to abertac at nau.edu. Uh, feel free to do that. Um, and also, this is an open request. Any pictures that you can send of your program or clients with the appropriate releases, uh, please send them to abertac at nau.edu. We would love to see and have a visual of what's going on across the country. Uh, we would really appreciate that. Um, so uh, uh, Mark is reading all the thank yous. And uh, we'll continue with that. But from here on in, we're going to go webinar silent. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>